Hello friends and welcome back to my studio. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Pouring Coast to Coast. So today's challenge was set by me, so that's why I'm starting things off. And the only requirements I gave were to use at least two base coat colors and to leave negative space. So um, I'm going to give you a little different perspective on how to use two base coat colors. I, I think a lot of times we see either split canvases or things like that, but I'm going to do a dirty pour style. So um, basically I'm going to take two different base coats, pour them together, and then pour them onto the canvas and stretch it out. And you get some really interesting um, results from that. So. That's what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna bring you down, show you the paints, and let's get pouring. Here are our colors, and for the base coat, I have these beautiful lavender gray drips that were saved from another pour. I have Blick Acrylics, uh, or Blick Acrylics Metallic Copper. This is a beautiful copper, probably just gorgeous. From this little piggy, I have Sea Glass. I have Thalo Blue from Golden. I have Permanent Violet Deep from Golden. This is dioxazine purple and copper mixed together. If you're familiar with the color uh, antique copper from Folk Art, it's very similar. And then from Golden, I have Payne's Gray. Or sorry, this is a Liquitex Payne's Gray. And then I have, from Modern Masters, I have Gold Flash, which is an interference gold. Here we go. So I'm gonna do mostly lavender here. And then add in some of my copper. And I'm pouring it up from a pie so that you get a good dirty pour. And I'm just gonna alternate. Um, the Lavender and the copper might seem like a really strange combination, but the copper ends up looking very flame-like with this, which I think is just gorgeous. And just pouring from up high. I wanted to add that the thing I think I like most about this type of background doing this dirty pour style is that when you are intentionally leaving negative space and you do something like a street pour into the center of it, when you stretch that out, the um, effects that you get in that background color kind of swirl around your centerpiece and it creates almost like a vortex look to it, kind of like if you're in a wind tunnel, um, you know, when they test air going around a car or something like that. It reminds me of that sort of feel, so I really enjoy that a lot sure how well that's going to show up on camera and like I said this dries much more vibrant than it looks when it's wet um, but I think this is a great place to start. So I'm going to be fast forwarding through this first pour a little bit because it wasn't my favorite but I did like how I explained the background a little better on this pour so I decided to keep it but I'm just gonna fast forward through this pretty quickly and then we'll take the second pour more slowly. And make sure you stick around right to the end because I will have dried results for you. When 
I did not get as much copper in here as I wanted, so I'm just going to redo this a little bit. Starting up a little bit on the high side. Starting up a little on the high side. <laughs> than I tend to normally do. I want to keep some of this though, so I'm going to bring it back the other way and open that up. Yeah, I'm like 
liking that a lot. I'm liking that a whole lot. One of the really nice things about working on a spinner is it gives you the opportunity to kind of look at it from different directions. Yeah, I'm liking this a lot. I'm just gonna leave it. Quick wet walk through here. So this was the first one that I did, which I wasn't super, super happy with, but I'm gonna let it dry, see how it goes. This one, however, Oh, look at that. I am absolutely in love with this piece. Sorry for the glare. Love those copper flames. The way that copper and phthalo plays together and the copper and violet. Ooh. And the other thing, this uh, sea glass w next to the phthalo blue, I think is also really stunning. I can't wait to see how this dries. Here we are with a final dry walkthrough. Look at that background. How fun is that? And I love how this interference gold dried in the middle. And then there's this one, which if you look at this part, dried gorgeously. Loving the colors, loving that background, but I got cracks. I left the space heater on in my attic overnight and I think it dried too fast and that's what we got. But still love these paintings. I'm going to see if I can do something to camouflage the cracks. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. And Britta is up next. Can't wait to see what she did. Hope you guys have a beautiful day.